Happy Friday, party people. Today we are going to talk about medieval versus Renaissance art. I know for some of you this might be a little boring. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of art myself. Don't tell Mrs. McGalliard. Uh, I am not. The, I have not. I have not been the biggest fan of art myself. But Renaissance and medieval art. Now that I can get behind. So. Let's go, let's jump right into it. So some characteristics about medieval art. So before the Renaissance, yes, it was generally religious, uh, generally showed Jesus, saints, scenes from the Bible, that sort of thing. Um, important figures in the work were generally bigger than those around them. Case in point right here. Uh, the figures were stiff. They lack a sense of movement. You see right here, everything's very stiff. It's like, uh, and nobody, it, you can't really see the movement in the picture. Figures were almost always fully dressed in medieval art. The faces were serious. They often showed no emotion. They were just kind of, kind of faces, right? No emotion, no nothing going on. They did use bright colors. Uh, the backgrounds were mostly one color. Most of the time they were gold, as evident by these two. These are classic medieval artwork. So, some things to notice in uh, medieval or medieval, depending on how you say it. I say medieval because I had a college professor who was a real stickler about that. Uh, so, medieval, medieval art, some things to notice. Uh, you look at the people. They all look the same. <laughs> they all pretty much look like stick figures. They, a lot of them have the same face, uh, especially like if one artist paints a lot of paintings, they might all the people might have the same face. Um, the depth perception, there is none. Some of the people and objects look like they're just floating. Like, look at this woman right here. She looks like she's just floating. There's no sense of of depth in the work like these do not look closer than that the castle just looks like it's up on the page it doesn't look like it's far back get what i'm saying uh, and then linear perspective focus point vanishing point there is none uh, that's a, that's a lot of art terms that we're going to touch on briefly but not a whole lot uh, and then religion most medieval art has some sort of religious aspect to it uh, Probably 99% of it does. <laughs> um, and the artists normally sign their work to know whose work it is. Uh, in this painting, though, we actually do not see that. So, give you an opportunity on Edpuzzle to answer this question really quick. This medieval painting of Jesus illustrates religious scene, background being one color, one or two colors. Serious face, no emotion, or D, all of the above. It's D. It's, it's D, all of the above. Make sure you answer it right. All right, so you'll pause, answer this question. Welcome back. So now we are going to look at Giotto. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Madonna and the Child. Uh, these are, imp again, important figures are bigger than others. It's a religious scene. The figures are stiff. Faces are serious. Figures are fully dressed, bright colors, and background is mostly one color. Typical medieval artwork. Look at these guys. Faces show absolutely no emotion whatsoever, and they have the same face. That's just weird. Uh, again, these are some medieval art examples. No perspective, no depth, cannot see into the distance. Now we get to the Renaissance. So some characteristics of Renaissance art, guys. Renaissance art, it's kind of in the middle. It's some of it's religious, some of it's not. Renaissance artists generally have an interest in nature. Figures are very lifelike. They're three-dimensional, not two-dimensional like we just saw. Figures are active. They're often shown moving. Sometimes the figures are clothed, sometimes they are nude. That is a really a defining characteristic of Renaissance art. A lot of the figures in the paintings and sculptures are nude. Um, they are shown doing 
real people doing everyday sort of things. Um, faces were expressive. They weren't just kind of bland looks. Uh, colors responded to light. They have shadows, highlights, things like that. Paintings were symmetrical, so the right and left sides were balanced. And they had perspective. They have depth. So some things to notice. And notice the people and their faces. They all look real. They do not look like stick figures. And they all have different faces. Uh, you can see depth perception. You can definitely tell that this is far back. This is up close. And you can see the depth. Um, there is linear perspective, a vanishing or focus point. You obviously focus. When you look at this painting for the first time, you focus right here, right there. Um, you're drawn to one point, right? And the people in the painting seem to be free to do whatever they want. There is no reference to religion in this painting at all. Uh, as you can see, everybody's kind of doing their own thing, having their own conversations. This guy's reading. Um, people are carrying on, having great philosophical discussions. Uh, and this, I think that's an awesome, awesome painting. So here's another very famous Renaissance painting. It's the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and again, this is a non-religious scene. It's a portrait. You can see the depth behind the Mona Lisa. Her figure is three-dimensional. She, uh, she shows a little bit of emotion. We're not really sure what she's doing. Is she smiling? Is she smirking? Is she doing something else? Uh, she has a, there are a lot of shadows here that responds well to light and it has an interest in nature, right? This is a nature scene behind her. So this is the Sistine Chapel. Uh, the walls and the ceilings were painted by Michelangelo. This is in the Vatican. Um, and just look at that. Can you imagine how long that took and how careful he had to be? That's crazy. And this is one of the figures in the Sistine Chapel. It's the creation of Adam. This is God and the angels. This is Adam. He's receiving life. He's receiving his breath. As you can see, we have a religious scene, three-dimensional figures. They had, they're doing activity. They're showing emotion. Uh, we have clothed figures and nude figures. Uh, faces are expressive. Shadows. The painting responds to light. There is a balanced composition. It's all around. Good job, Michelangelo. This is my, one, of, one of Michelangelo's other famous works, The Last Judgment. It's a religious scene. Figures are active. There are both nude and clothed figures. There's movement. There's symmetry on both sides. And the figures are very lifelike and three-dimensional. So this is one we just looked at but I wanted to kind of go back to it. Uh, this is a, by Raphael, it's the School of Athens. And he actually included some faces of his contemporaries and himself in his painting. So this figure right here actually has the face of Leonardo da Vinci. This figure here has the face of Michelangelo. And this figure here is of Raphael himself. So I thought that was kind of cool. Wanted to include for you guys. Again, we have perspective, symmetrical, shadows, expressive faces. There's figures that are both nude and clothed. It's a non-religious scene, people doing everyday tasks. Figures are active, they're walking, they're talking, they're carrying on, doing all sorts of different activities. And then if we zoom in, so these two figures are these two figures right here, yeah. So, if we zoom in, we have Plato on the left and Aristotle on the right. They were two uh, classical Greek philosophers. And this kind of, I thought this was very interesting because it kind of shows us the, the two schools of thought and the shift in thought during the Renaissance period. So we have Plato looking up to the heavens or the ideal realm. We want to get all our thought from religion. And then we have Aristotle, who looks down to this earth, the here, the now, the what's going on around us, the humanist side. So, you know, we have the, the religion part, 
and we have the here now humanist part and it just shows uh i think that Raphael probably thought about this when he painted this and he said you know i look around me and we have this kind of power shift all these different schools of thought so maybe subconsciously or consciously we don't know he included plato telling us to look to the heavens for our thoughts and for what is ideal and aristotle saying wait 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 here now humanist things are good as well so that's today's presentation on renaissance art and how it differs from medieval or medieval art i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys have a great weekend check canvas uh, for what to do for today I believe there's no assignment for today. Just work on your extra credit assignment if you so choose to. And I will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend and talk to you later.